Okay, let's look at the dot product and where do we use the dot product? Another name for this is the scalar product. Scalar product. And it, effectively what we're doing is we're taking two vectors, a P and a Q, and we're dotting them. That's a specific kind of vector multiplication. Remember there was also the cross product. Um, so uh, we'll see how we apply it in a second, but you've got one vector P and another vector Q. You dot them, and this equals the magnitude of P times the magnitude of Q times the cos of the angle between them. And effectively, this operation allows you to do two things. The first is it allows you to get an orthogonal projection. Uh, it's a, just a fancy word. Uh, it's a perpendicular projection of a vector onto uh, another, into another direction. So it's really the same as just getting uh, a component. If that's your f, that's your x direction, theta. It's very similar to just getting f cos theta, right? To getting that projection. That's what the dot product does is it projects um, the magnitude of, the, of one vector in the direction of the other vector. It projects it. So it allows us to get the components. If we're using x, y, and z axes, then this operation allows us to get f, x, f, y, and f, z. It's a projection. It projects one onto the other. Uh, but remember, it is a scalar product. So this gives you only a number. It gives you a scalar value. It gives you no infor uh, directional information. It's not a vector. P dot Q does not give you a vector. It gives you a scalar number. Okay? So, let's just... For example, if you have f, right, you've got this force f, it looks like something like this, I don't know, 2i minus 3j plus k. So it's in i, j, k vector form, Newton. And I want to know what is the component of this vector, this force vector, in the x direction. Well, then I need... I've got my first vector. I need a second vector pointing in the direction of f of x, right? So that I can dot this vector with that vector, and then I can get the component fx. So, in this specific example, I can choose the second vector, that second vector, to be i, which is just the unit vector in the x direction. I say f dot i. And then, what is this equal to? It's the magnitude of the first one. It's the magnitude of the second one. I, The magnitude of I is 1. And it is the cos of the angle between them. Okay? So that allows me then to get Fx. Okay? We'll do, we'll do a full-on example to show exactly how this will work. But notice now that this uh, is only a scalar value. It's a scalar it's got no direction information. So all that we've done is we've calculated the scalar component of f in the x direction. If we wanted to now reconvert this guy into a vector, all we need to do is then go and multiply again by that same vector, that second vector, i. Okay? Hope that makes sense. Now, in general... This works for any uh, unit vector. So this was a unit vector. But if you wanted to get this force, uh, the, the orthogonal projection of this force along any, per, uh, any direction, then all you do is you calculate a unit vector in that direction that you're looking for. And you say f dot n, which is then equal to the magnitude of f the magnitude of n, and the cos of the angle between them. Okay. So if you've... So it's possible for then for you to get this by knowing what these two vectors look like in their i and j and k form. Now the second um, application, which is again just... Oh, by the way, 
make sure that you know how to calculate dot products. Remember, uh, it's simply P dot Q is P Q cos of the angle between them. So if you've got if you've got two vectors that are pointing in the same direction, then their angle uh, alpha is zero, and cos of zero is one. So then this will be one. That's why they say i dot i is one, j dot j is one, k dot k. Any time you've got two vectors, unit vectors that are perpendicular, like i j j i etc., then you're going to have a cos ninety, which is zero. Okay. All right. So the second way of using this is to use it to calculate angles between two vectors. So like we saw, f dot n is f n cos theta. So if we wanted to find, so we've got f and we've got some unit vector n, and we wanted to find the angle between those two then we simply solve for theta like this right okay and in general remember this is a specific case for our um, application where we are working with forces and unit vectors but this is a general application and a general rule that you can determine the angle between any two vectors um, just by rearranging this equation. Alright, okay we'll look at some examples in the next one.